Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sandy Alnock. And if you're new here, please do feel free to share something in the comments to tell me who you are. Where are you from? What kind of art do you make? What kind of art do you want to learn to make? Because I'm an art teacher at heart and I'd love to know how I can help. A little bit about me. I live in Western Washington. I don't drink coffee, which makes me an anomaly here. Everybody drinks coffee. I have two dogs and we are excited because the sunny weather is finally, I hate to say it out loud, the sunny weather is finally coming. According to the weatherman, it's supposed to be nice all week and it's going to be 75 by Friday. If I say that out loud, I hope it doesn't jinx it. <laughs> but also I'm an artist working in a lot of mediums. I work in all sorts of things. You can find playlists for your favorite in my playlist tab on my channel. I also work in all different sizes from very small things that you can put on a card in an envelope to larger pieces that you can frame for your wall and sketchbooks and everything in between. Today I'm going to be answering a question that was raised by Deborah over on ArtVenture. ArtVenture is my community on Mighty Networks. You can access that either through the web or through an app and it's free to join. You're welcome to join in with us over there. It's kind of like a social media without the ads, without the algorithms, without any tech getting in the way. It's just us and our art. We have lots of great conversations. There's even a few really inexpensive classes over there that you could check out. All right. So Deborah asked me this. She says, hi, Sandy. I have taken a local course in watercolor and ink sketchbook. They taught ink drawing first. Is this just a matter of preference or do you feel there are advantages to watercolor first? And that is a great question because I just released two classes last week. One does the watercolor first and one does the ink first. And I didn't really explain in either one of them why I choose one over the other for certain circumstances. So today I'm going to share two sketchbook examples comparing the two and then I'll share two larger pieces so you can kind of get an idea of what I mean when I say depends on what you want to create. So let's get started. Wash and ink, ink and wash, which comes first? I almost did chickens and eggs and decided you would probably rather see a flower. So we're going to do a foxglove. On the left-hand side, we're going to do the ink first and on the right-hand side, the watercolor first. And you'll see another foxglove that's much more spectacular than this in a later section. But on the left side, when I'm drawing with pen and ink, on white paper, especially if I don't have a pre-sketch down. Uh, sometimes I don't do that when I'm drawing outside. I just get the pen and start drawing. The whole idea of white paper and a black pen that doesn't erase can be really intimidating. And you can end up scaring yourself out of doing anything loose and free because you're all worried about trying to get it right. And what if I get this wrong? I can't erase the line, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you're with me, then make sure you click the thumbs up button because <laughs> that happens to me. It happens to a lot of us because we lose confidence when we see that line that won't go anywhere. And then when we get to the watercolor portion, yes, it's more relaxing to just paint it in, but it feels kind of like a coloring book. And we start going right up to every single line and we try not to go out of the lines and we don't want to you know, we don't want to do anything expressive here. We just want to fill everything in. And the feeling of a sketch like this for me feels kind of on the static side. There's not any real energy to it. But when I can do something that's even much quicker than this and start to paint right away rather than worrying about the pen and ink yet, just using a very light general sense of pencil lines to tell me kind of where there's blossoms at, what direction they're facing and how big they are. I can throw color in and I'm free to leave white space. I'm free to leave gaps in between flowers, all kinds of things that I wouldn't do when I'm filling in something that already has lines. And this is the style that I did the teaching for the Powell's Wood sketches class. And in that, that class, I am hoping that it's going to free people up 
to get looser with your sketches and not feel like, oh my gosh, I can't sketch because I can't get my pen lines right. Sketching is not about getting it right. Sketching is just about the practice of doing it, just getting out there and doing it. And that's one of the reasons why I, I wanted to be sure to bring this to my students so that you guys could loosen up a little bit and not stress out so much over the pen lines. So I've added in a little extra color while the flowers were wet and then added in some greens for the stems. And then when it comes to the pen lines, I can just get loose. I'm not tracing around all the shapes that I made because those shapes were not made to be the whole flower. They were just general color in that area. I don't care if it's out of the lines or in the lines, if there's extra white space included, all the better, because that makes it look like looking like I left highlights, like it was deliberate, right? That's always a nice thing. I'm not worried about whether the sun is shining on those highlights. I'm just looking for something loose and fresh that's going to capture the feeling of that flower. And these foxglove were like these happy little flouncy flowers that got lost on the left-hand side from all of the being careful. But on the right-hand side, they got loose and happy and I felt better after doing it. And it took half the time to do the second one as it did the first one. And for me, sometimes just getting it done quickly to get away from like the rain cloud on the horizon is a good thing. Or if I'm out running errands and I stop to do a quick sketch, I like to get that done quickly. And I sketch every day and I don't have hours and hours to give to it. So it's helpful to be able to just do something quickly this technique helps significantly in getting that done quick. So, you know, consider a lot of different things, but most importantly, what is the look you're going for? Are you looking to get really careful with things or are you just want to be loose and fresh? The link to the Palswood sketch class is down below the video in the doobly do down there. Now I'm going to do another quick one in the sketchbook and this one is a building. And after I released the Market Street sketches, which were all buildings, then one of my students sent me a photo from her trip to Portland. She saw a bunch of buildings there and she's like, oh, that looks like Sandy's class. So I decided to draw the post office from that one. She took it at a really crazy angle. So it does have perspective in it. And in the Market Street class, you don't have to worry about any perspective because I did not include any perspective. They're all straight up buildings. So you don't have to worry about that make it easy, at least easier. And here I've drawn all of the building and the bricks and the windows and everything in the pen and ink first, and then I can just flow color over it. Now, when you're doing a quick sketch, you can also just leave that much color in it and not do anything else. You don't have to do a ton of detail. And here I did decide I would throw some shadows into areas where the sun was casting a shadow onto the building, as well as sections that were receded into the building because it had multiple facades on it that were at different levels closer and further from the street and then started to move on to the other side where I was going to begin with the watercolor. I put down a light wash and then a second wash dropped into it leaving those columns a little bit lighter leaving some highlights on them because one of the things I messed up on the pen and ink portion on the left was the columns got really scrawny and skinny. They are not supposed to be scrawny and skinny, but once I put them in there, I couldn't fix them. I also had missed out on doing the capitals on the top, the little decorative things on the tops of the columns. And I wanted to make sure I included that in the second half. So I could kind of give myself almost sketched areas, sketched dark areas with watercolor that I can then use for my pen and ink guidelines without having to, you know, really stress out about the specifics of everything. I'm going to keep the drawing much looser, but I have better guidelines here than my pencil lines, which were obviously wrong because the columns on the left-hand side were just way too skinny. So I've got some general indications here, but even so, there are going to be some areas that are not correct in the watercolor. So don't feel like your watercolor has to be perfect either. The pen and ink is what's going to clean that up. Now the columns, as they go across the building, 
change in perspective from the left side to the right side because of the angle that she took the picture at because it was a kind of extreme thing. I've straightened it out a little bit here. But now that I have those white streaks, I can see exactly what I want to do with the columns because they're supposed to join up with those little sections on the top. And I could fix that given that now I'm working with the watercolor here at the end. There's a row of windows in there that I got wrong in the watercolor because I was trusting my watercolor lines. So that little row of windows needs to be moved over too. If I had done that in pen and ink, it'd be really hard to move them over, but I can do that a little bit with my pen and not stress out over the shadows that now appear to the left side of them because those are in watercolor, they're not in pen. So a lot of my pen work tends to be fixing things that I didn't get right in the first pass on whatever it was that I did. The second half of the, the drawing looks a little bit more correct in those columns, the way the columns are placed and in the columns that have lighting on them than the, the side on the left. The Market Street Sketches link is in the doobly-doo as well, and those all have templates that you follow. You just get to decorate your own windows, decide what kind you want to put in your drawings. So this first half of the video covers sketching, just, you know, small sketches. And in the second half, we're going to look at how this flows out into a larger piece of art. Because if you're doing something larger, the issues that you're facing are a bit different than when you're working really small like this on a three and a half by five and a half sketchbook. So I decided I would draw the Chrysler building. I lived in New York when I was a much younger pup and loved this building. I just love the art deco feel to it. It's got all these crazy windows with strange shapes on them and curves and just all kinds of decorative details and gargoyles and stuff. So I decided I would draw that and I'm creating this on a block of watercolor paper. Blocks are sealed all the way around except for an opening. You see the opening is white there. The adhesive around it is black, and that holds the whole thing down. So you don't have to tape anything down. Watercolor blocks are a little more expensive than regular watercolor paper pads, that sort of thing. But for me, I use these a lot when I travel because then I don't have to bring tape with me. I can just take a couple of these blocks in my bag and not have to not have to stress. And then when you want to take the top sheet off, you just slide something in between the opening and pull the top page off. So for this one, after the sketch was all done, I added the watercolor first, and I wanted the building to just have a really nice feel to it color-wise. So I went from a golden color on the left to more of a blue color in the shadows, and then we'll get into more of a, a brown color as we get over to the right, and it's gonna go from darker color at the top to lighter at the bottom. Just doing this wash was so pleasing. I love doing big washes like this. And I wasn't going to worry about a sky behind it. I was just like happy to be able to practice doing a wash on this one. Just remember with washes, you want to make sure your pigment consistency is the same for the colors that are touching each other. If you use a really wet wash in one area, use a wet wash to blend it in with as opposed to a thick wash because you'll, you won't get this kind of nice smooth blend. So once that was dry, I was able to do a second very, very pale wash with some of the bluish color to create the areas where the windows go because there are windows that kind of go down in a, a streak down the building. And I knew I was going to do really loose pen and ink on top of this. I wasn't going to do really detailed stuff, which meant that I wanted to have the guidelines of these straight lines to communicate that those are all in a row because then I don't have to make everything perfect because you could get lost in trying to get a T-square and a ruler and measure everything out and try to make them all perfect. But if I'm fitting them just into a column where there's already some darker color, it's much easier to just do some sketchy lines to create the feeling of that portion of the building and not have to drive yourself bonkers. So then I could get the pen out. Now here I used a micron pen because I wanted something thinner than the pens that I have for fountain pens. And in the Market Street class, we use micron pens because the details are really small on those. And just 
had fun adding details and I could add them in a very sketchy fashion, didn't have to stress over it. And I had that secondary wash of watercolor that I could follow for some of the sections that had different amounts of, of shadow in them. My windows could just kind of be sketched in over top of some of the color that I'd put down. And the gargoyles there sticking out from the top of the building had, you know, shapes that were already done in the watercolor. And here's where the window stuff comes in that this just made it so much easier. So the windows look like they're all aligned, even though they're just messy half lines in some cases. This building has windows where some people had their curtains open, some people had them closed, and they're all different. Every single window is different. And I didn't want to sit there and micromanage exactly every single window. So I was able to do that with the color and give it that unified feeling for the whole building without driving myself bananas. Because after I do a drawing like this for part of the time, I get really bored and I don't want to finish all the dang windows. But I also had this going from dark at the top to lighter at the bottom. So I was okay with letting a little bit of it get looser as I got to the bottom of the drawing. So there's a building rendition, larger. And let's look at what the foxglove, the same flower as before, but the single stalk instead of breaking it into two parts in the sketch. When you're drawing with an area that you have a bigger space to work with, I've got a, a much larger block this time. I'm making a nice big drawing of these flowers, which means the size that I have to work with is going to work great to get a lot of this detail in. If I tried making this much detail in the sketch in the sketchbook, then most of the flower ends up being black, especially if you're somebody who uses, say, Sharpies when you're doing your drawings. That's a thicker pen and you're going to end up taking up a lot of the real estate of the areas where the color is supposed to be by using a really thick pen. It might be easier to watercolor into a thick pen, but it's going to make the whole drawing darker in that way. And here I could add a little bit of shading using the pen because the area is so much bigger and I have more space to work with. Now, as for the watercoloring of this one, the painting came out just as static, I guess, as the first sketch did, even though the drawing came out much better. I've got lots more detail in the pen and ink. But when I have lines and I'm trying to fill in the lines, this is just something that I do that I don't like stylistically for me. And I know lots of other people do this all the time and love it. And that's their style. And that's great. But I like something a little bit looser. And therefore, this didn't make me as happy. The pen and ink part made me very happy. But the watercoloring didn't. I did get to practice mixing a lot of purples. The picture that I had had a lot of kind of dusky colors, you know, not really bright, happy purples. They were more muted types of colors. So I was using a lot of French ultramarine blue and some anthraquinoid scarlet. I tried a little pyrrole scarlet in there. Just lots of different colors to see if I could make things that assimilated what I saw in the reference. And it was a great exercise in mixing colors. At least there's that much. And this drawing will be, drawing slash painting, I guess, will be in my fine art website. Right now I have a sale going on until Mother's Day on all my florals. And I'm going to be putting some more florals in there on Saturday because I've got some more flowers coming up for you in a future video. So if you're interested in getting in on the sale, the link is in the doobly doo. Big thanks to Deborah for asking the question that prompted this video. I hope that that was helpful to her as well as to you. And always remember, there are no dumb questions. If you have the question, there's probably 10, 15, 20, 100 other people who want to know the same thing. So just keep asking. And I will see you guys again next time. My next video is on Saturday. See you later.